If you're struggling with injuries in martial arts right now, this is the video for you. Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt. If you're new here, this is a channel about Southern Chinese martial arts and how they make our lives more interesting. If that sounds interesting to you, then please consider subscribing. No one trains martial arts for long before they start to get injuries. First, it might be a short-term thing or perhaps a very minor injury that you can manage, a shoulder, a knee, a wrist. But as you start to get older, those injuries start to stick around. But the older you get, that one thing turns into another thing and another thing. And before long, you end up with this long list of injuries. And people joke it's quicker to tell someone what isn't hurting rather than what is. Now, let me tell you a little bit about my story in order to put this into context. I was 17 when I started training Chinese martial arts and I loved it. From the, the very first day, I was up the next morning, training, 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 trying to get as good as I could. So I trained at home as well as in class all the time, and my desire to push myself meant that I was training hard, getting better, but I wasn't training smart. So I picked up a shoulder injury, which I trained through with my arm in a sling. I probably shouldn't have, but I did. But even to this day, but it wasn't until I had a back injury that things really started to change. And so when I wasn't walking around with a huge backpack on full of books or sitting in terrible posture at a desk trying to learn as much as I could, I'd then go and push my body for hours in training and then probably get up early the next day so I could train before uni. Now, my desire was to get as good as possible as fast as possible. And that came to a head when I herniated two discs in my lower back. The discs pushed on my nerve, which at its worst gave me pain even in the front of my shin as the nerve goes across there. So I tried everything to get over this. I tried training through it. I spent my savings on all manner of treatments that I thought might be the last final thing that I needed to do to, to get my health back. Now I even tried not training for a short period. And if anything, that actually made it worse. But in the thick of that back injury and amongst the other injuries I've picked up, I learned to value them rather than despair. And let me share why. Now, the first one is understanding pain and the fact that you are not your pain. Now, it sounds stupid, you are not your pain, but actually, if you've been in that situation where all of your mental bandwidth is being taken up by that sensation in, for me, my lower back, for you, whatever else you might be going through, that can be all consuming. And if you've never had to go through that, well then, I'm glad and I hope you never have to. But you know that meditative thing where your mind is the sky and your thoughts are the clouds and you just don't judge the clouds as they come past, you just let them go. Well, in the same way, that's how I looked at my pain, where I could be feeling quite a lot of pain. But when you go through that process of examining the pain, I realized that the pain wasn't quite as intense. It, I wasn't feeling the pain, there was just pain and I was just looking at it, that little bit of detachment makes it feel less intense, it's less immediate. And then that starts to be a habit that you start to pick up. So the pain isn't constant and consuming. And in fact, when you detach yourself from it and sort of look at it from afar without necessarily having to judge it, that makes a huge difference. And so you realize that you're not your pain. And in fact, it's less in charge of you than you think. So I noticed, for example, that when I was at my most stressed with work or whatever else is going on in life, then in fact, my pain would feel worse as well. And even just that knowledge, in fact, when I was, my back was starting to feel bad and I'd have to sort of take a step back and look at my life and go, oh yeah, maybe I've been a little bit too busy. Maybe I'm feeling manic. Maybe I need to recharge and take, uh, take some time off. That's really helpful to manage that sensation. So pain is in part a perception. And when the world starts to feel a little bit more unpleasant, that can start to affect how we perceive our own pain. So it doesn't go away, but you can use that to help to manage it. Even just having that idea in the back of your mind and being able to detach yourself from if it's a particularly intense pain. And I found that helped in daily life when dealing with other types of emotions or stresses. Now, the second thing that's helped my martial arts is because I wasn't able to go full pelt all the time that I would like to do, it meant I had to slow down and work on being more refined and work on having clean, crisp movements. I would work slow and precise and just go through my movements. Each movement has a purpose, and when you slow it down, your mistakes become more obvious. Now, for me, I see movements in terms of the lines that they follow. And where those lines go depend on the martial application for that movement. So 
you need to understand what the movement's for and then you need to refine the movement. And having a chuffing bad back gave me a chance to actually take some time to slow down and look at each move and look at the martial applications for each move. Before, I was probably guilty of being one of those people who I start the form at one point, I go hard, I do the form as good as I can and I get to the end and then that's one form done and you go through the next one and the next one. Whereas in actual fact, if you take a movement and you drill that and work that, look at the applications, look at different directions, try and find some new applications, that totally changed my approach to Chinese martial arts. So for example, if I was doing a particular move, I might think about maybe there's an overhook, maybe there's an underhook in each one, and looking at those overhooks or underhooks, and then seeing the footwork perhaps in that movement and how that dictates what the marsh application is. And that approach gave me a much deeper understanding of my forms had I just gone from start to finish, full pelt, full power every time, I wouldn't have refined them nearly to the same degree. I'm not saying I'm perfect, I've still got a long way to go and I make all my mistakes, but I'm better than I would have been, definitely and that's because of my injuries. And hopefully I can use that approach to continue to practice well into my old age. That's the plan anyway. Most of what I learned from my injuries though was about alignment. When anything you do seems to aggravate a particular injury, it makes you really look at the body. So particularly with my lower back, I went back to basics and questioned everything. So I started from the ground up literally and looked at every aspect of my posture and it's something that I'm still doing to this day and in fact it's one of the biggest things I enjoy about Chinese martial arts these days apart from the old fighting but COVID. The, the ability to learn how to utilize your body in an efficient way to make those movements work I find it endlessly fascinating. So in Chinese martial arts, as with all martial arts, the mechanics are key. And now I understand so much more the whys and the hows. So the why, why it's important to have proper alignment so it reduces pressure on a particular joint and how to get that alignment and maintain that alignment and structure as you go through that move and into other movements. So it's made my movements a lot more efficient and tightened up the circles in a lot of the movements while still trying to maintain that fluidity where you need it. And all of that stuff around pain, around looking into the applications, refining the movements, alignment, all of that comes together then when I come to teach. I've got that depth and that background having lived it, having gone through the pain, literally, so that I can hopefully try and help my students avoid the same pitfalls and the same mistakes that I did or if they come to me saying, oh, this movement feels uncomfortable, I've, I just go, well, your knee and toe alignment is out or there's something to do with their posture, their upper back, all this kind of stuff. And it's just nice to be able to help. It's so cool to be able to pass that on and to help other people be pain-free or at least have less pain. You know, we're all working with what we've got, but now it's trying to utilize my body in the best way possible and make it as strong and fit as I can while still enjoying my health and Chinese martial arts. So we can't always just get rid of pain but we can learn to deal with it and manage it and through training Chinese martial arts it's not just about hitting people as much as I enjoy hitting people in a nice way, friends uh, mostly. So if you're going through pain in your training or just in life maybe you've picked up an injury from anywhere else. I hope some of this has been useful. I've learned a lot from my injuries and it's actually made me the person that I am today. So in a weird way, I'm kind of glad that I had them. I've also learned a lot from Chinese martial arts. So here's a video on the screen about the things you can learn if you do Chinese martial arts. If you've got this far through the video, then maybe consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.